Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Anderson, and I'm here to talk to you about your veins and restless legs. So I'm going to attempt to make this explanation very clear. It may be a challenge because I have had a lot of practice trying to explain this to patients. So, so here we go. Hopefully you'll follow me along. First of all, I'm known because of my ability uh, and first to publish and I wrote a book about the fact that we can reverse restless legs by doing surgery. And just to give you a bit of an overview, uh, these surgeries involve opening up nerve tunnels. Usually there's three of these tunnels uh, that seem to be the main culprits because these tunnels, think of them as carpal tunnel syndrome in your wrist. We have five of these that we look at in the lower extremity from the knee down. And it's primarily three of these that we usually work on. And out of those three, there's two that I think are the most important of all. And I'll get back to why I think they're most important of all here in just a minute. But first, I wanna explain a little bit of anatomy to you. And I don't have any diagrams or fancy things to show you. I'm just kind of putting this together on the fly. So bear with me. But when you look at your legs from the knee down to the ankle, there's lots of muscles in that area. A lot of you've heard of the gastrocnemius muscle, for instance, that's your calf muscle. All these muscles are separated by compartments. What's a compartment? Well, a compartment is composed of fascial tissue. So what's fascial tissue? Well, kind of gross, but let's say you bite into some steak, that grisly tissue, that's the fascia. So it's just tight connected tissue. It's like partitions in, in a building. They're separating these muscle compartments. Now we were built and we were designed in a very remarkable way because that fascia serves a function because it's a confined area. M muscles are in it, right? Follow that? So now I'm gonna talk about your veins. What's that got to do with this? Well, and I'm going to get back to this in a minute, but understand that some of you come to me and you say, you know, I've heard of vein stripping or doing something with veins and that might help restless legs. And I'm not here to contest that. I think in some cases it might help somewhat, might help a little, might help a lot, but I don't think it's attacking the direct cause of the problem because what I do, what I do kind of proves um, that that's not really the, the total cause or it's not total, the total answer to your problem. So follow along here. When you're talking about blood flow, that you've got your heart up here, I'm gonna keep this very basic, and the blood flowing down from the heart to the feet is through the arteries. Most of you know that. Arteries are very stiff. They're very dense. They're, they have muscle in them. So they're more like pipes. They don't give a lot. They expand a little bit with the pressure coming out of your heart, but, but they're a lot more rigid than the veins that bring the blood back up. So. The blood goes down to the tip of your toe, it makes a U-turn, goes back up to the heart through the venous system. So let's compare the arteries to the veins. Arteries are three times stiffer than veins. Veins are very pliable. They're easy, easily compressed, okay? Here's the other thing about the veins. Remember, I talked about earlier, there are leg compartments. These leg compartments are a confined space that have muscles in them. So that's one of the neat ways that you get blood back up to your heart. Have you ever thought of that? You've got all that blood going down. How's it gonna get back up? And one of the main mechanisms, it's really called a venous pump. So when those muscles contract in those confined compartment spaces, which are divided by, what again, fascia, that's like a pump. And that squeezing of those muscles on the veins pumps the blood back up. And it's not all the picture, but that's a big part of why uh, or how blood gets back up to the heart. So let me take it a step further now. So hopefully you've got that. So the follow, the next thing is that two of these three tunnels that I talk about just happen to be the exit site or entry site to the compartments, one's on the front, one's on the back, where these veins are, okay? So right next to the vein is an artery and a nerve in these areas. So when the nerve is going through a tunnel that has become too tight, it's gonna create squeezing on the nerve. It's gonna damage the nerve. And we've done intraoperative nerve monitoring so we can show in the operating room, these nerves after the tunnels have been opened, like doing carpal tunnel surgery, the nerve function improves. We put electrodes in the legs, in the muscles I should say, stimulate the nerve before the, the, the uh, uh, nerve tunnels open and we do it again afterwards. So that's objective information that the nerve is working better. There's a bigger signal 
going from the nerve down into the muscle after the tunnel has been opened. But here's what we've not done in research, and I think would be really cool to do someday. But what I'm trying to tell you is, not only is there pressure on the nerve, but there's also pressure on the artery. And yes, sometimes people say, my feet used to be cold, they feel warmer now. And that happens quite often. They go, man, my feet are warmer and the color looks better. Well, why would that be? Because the same tissue that was squeezing on the nerve also is squeezing on the artery. So therefore maybe a little bit better blood flow down to the foot. But finally, and most importantly, that pressure on the nerve may also have caused pressure on the vein. Remember, it's squishy. The artery is pretty rigid, vein is really squishy. So if you're creating a lot of pressure on a vein, it's having, even though the muscle's contracting, it's having a hard time pumping that blood back up through the exit, which is the tunnel. So what I'm saying is the tunnel anatomically is where the nerve is going down, the uh, artery's going down, vein's going down, it's going, into a compartment, down towards the foot, and then the vein you know, coming back up, has to come back up, and it's gonna have pressure on it, and it's gonna basically stagnate or slow down blood flow. And it's not gonna stay there forever, of course. You get a very, pretty big leg and you die, but my point is simply that the blood flow is uh, going back up the heart, it slowed down through the venous system because the tunnel's too tight. So I know that's long-winded. I hope this is working for you. And that is why I think folks, and this is a key thing, that is why you have to get up and move. A lot of you are sitting and, and, and are laying down and that's when the restless legs really kicks in. And, and what's happening is you get up, move around, and it tends to go away, or at least I hear it tends to get a lot better. I think that's what's happening, I really do. I think that when you're moving and standing, you're, you're contracting those muscles, it's getting the venous blood to go again. Because if that venous blood stays down in those compartments, the pressure is going to get build up, build up, build up. It becomes tighter, you might get cramping symptoms, and it's going to create even more pressure on the nerves. So my point is, not only do you have compression, like a carpal tunnel thing going on, but I think there's another component of this that has to do with blood going down and blood coming back up, and it's impeded in some way, and that's causing you to get very low-grade compartment syndrome because that's really what I think is happening. It's a very subtle low-grade compartment center, which is yet a whole nother video. So hopefully that makes some sense. I love to teach and I hope this makes some sense. It kind of puts the picture together. And that is also why I think why some people might gain from having a vein procedures done because it might be reducing the pressure on the venous system in these compartments and that's putting less pressure on the nerves. But I do think the nerves are still the main problem and that's what our research tells us. So anyway, thank you for watching. I always forget to tell you to subscribe, but darn it, subscribe. We wanna get more information out like this because it's really good content, I think, and it can help a lot more people just like you. So thank you for watching and stay tuned for more information.